I was trying to improve my martial arts. I was involved in the martial arts, you see. And um, you're trying to achieve this state of moksha, yeah. you know, the Japanese style. And we wasn't getting anywhere. <laughs> and and uh, a friend of mine, he'd been to mother's meetings, but he didn't tell me about it, you see. And he, he couldn't make shamatsu out, so he gave me this tape, little digital audio tape, says, see what you think of that, Root, you know, so what you, your opinion. So I sat in the garden one uh, August afternoon and put this tape on, and the mother's voice, it would just sound so pure to me. I called Brenda out, I said, come and listen to this lady's voice, 100% pure. I don't know why I was saying it, because I'd yeah, it made no, what she was saying didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> but I just knew that this, this lady had something that, that I, I felt something here but nowhere else, you see. It couldn't make any sense of it. So, to cut a long story short, I went phoned my friend up and said, where did you get this tape from? Well, I've been going to Caxton always said, and uh, she goes there, but she's coming to my home. She's going to do a, a meeting in the East End of London. And uh, she's coming to my house, you see, before the meeting. So if you want to come over, you can meet her there, see. So, me and Brenda, uh, we go over to this place, and as we turn into the street, there's all these, because he lived at one crane road in, in Barking, there's all these strange people outside his house, because it's a hot summer day, and they've all got scarves on their feet. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, this is a bit strange, you know. <laughs> and he had this big wooden Buddha, and they're taking it out and put it in his garden, you see. And I said, what are you doing to your Buddha, John? He says, it's got boots. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got to go into the garden. I said, what do you mean it's got boots? He said, well, they'll tell you. Mm. So I said to this young fella, you, you cold, mate? I said, it's, it's, I, no, he said, I'm protecting my Vishudi. <laughs> well, I didn't know what he was talking about. So we had a, a general chat, and then um, and then we heard, we was in the garden talking to these people, and uh, I had some of my students with me who, you know, just be teaching. Because uh, we thought we were going to get this moksha to improve our martial arts, you think? Mm. So, uh, <laughs> someone, they used, we had some sent out Jay Shimataji, and, and uh, we were in the garden. And Mother came into the room. Um, Brenda hadn't experienced before that, but as far as I was concerned, Mother came into the room, and we all followed sort of into the room as well. It's almost where you were stand, sitting now. She sat down like this, you see. And this young Sajo Guinea come along and went to her feet. And as this girl, Cathy, went to her feet, we saw the Kundalini go up the back, yeah. you see? And her mother said, ah, oh, did you see the Kundalini? Do you see the Kundalini? Was it like light? No, it was, a, it was a distinct, transparent snake. That's just what it looked like, you know? And, you know, we were all dumbfounded, you know? I looked at him and she said, yeah. And he had two sons who were, in them days, it was a saint called... Uh, there was skinheads, yeah. you know, and they they didn't like sort of um, foreigners, if you like. And they wasn't going to have it coming into the house because they didn't want no foreigners coming into the house. They bother boots on everything. Yeah. But when we looked around, they both arrived. They'd come out of the garden, their boots were off, and they were... <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, you know, no one told them to do this. No. <laughs> and, but we saw, what we saw, no one could dispute what we'd seen, you see. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, his wife had just left him my friend, and he had five children. And his mother said, you know, are these your children? And to Brenda, to my wife. And she said, no, no, they're, they're not my children, mother. So she said, well, where are your children? So she said, you know, they're at home. Bring them to the meeting tonight. Um, so we shot home and got the kids and we went back that evening and uh, sat in front of the mother and all my lads were there as well. My mother was saying to each of them, you're very right-sided. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And they were saying, like, martial arts. Oh, you know. So, mm -hmm. so the time she got to me, I felt really guilty. I thought, well, these bugs, <laughs> it's all my fault, you know. And uh, when she, she sort of worked, I mean, I felt like this, it just felt like an ice cream cone above me. Yet. And, uh, and then someone said, can you say the Lord's Prayer? And I said, well, I don't know it. So they, they said it for me, you know, and they said, can you feel the cool breeze? And I could feel this up here, and I, I thought, it's a window open somewhere. <laughs> and mother said, can you feel it? I said, oh, yeah, but it didn't make any sense to me, you see. Yeah. Um, it felt very good, but it was all alien, completely alien to me. And um, that was it. She went along to my son, my oldest son, and I'd just lost my brother, who just died, who was very fond of my oldest son. Uh, he used to worry about it, you see. 
and she said to my eldest son, ah, there's someone here protecting you. You lost someone recently. You know. And he said, it's my uncle, you know, and I love him. And she said, well, you tell him you're okay now. You'll be fine. You let him go. I'm not going to let him go. But he did eventually. Mm. But um, And then some yogis were going to work on the younger two children and mother said, no, 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 they're realised, you leave them, leave them. But my experience yes. was when Rupert was in the garden with his Aiki men, mm. I was on the kitchen door, leaning, sort of half listening inside and half listening outside. And I didn't hear the, the house clear out of yogis, but the next voice I heard was, hello. And I turned round and well, I don't know how I restrained myself from dashing over and hugging her and kissing her. And it was as if, well, my heart did recognise Shimataji, but the brain doesn't, you see. And I thought, what are you doing? Well, control yourself. And I walked up <laughs> and I took her hand and I said, I'm so glad you could come. And she just hugged me. <laughs> but it was such a wonderful experience. Um, you can only relate it to your earthly mother if you've not seen her for years, and suddenly you see her and you think, ah, Mum, you know, and you really want to go and run and hug and kiss them. Well, that's exactly how I felt. But, of course, your brain doesn't understand your heart, does it? Yes. You know, and everything else that Rupert said is um, extremely accurate. <laughs> yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah it was absolutely. For years I couldn't comprehend what was going on that night. What I years? didn't believe yeah. for about two years that these vibrations was coming from me. I kept mm -hmm. saying, there's a door open somewhere. Couldn't comprehend that this was this cool breeze. And even when I did, it didn't make a lot of sense to me because I was brought up in a different culture. See, in this, you know, people said this is Kundalini, but mm -hmm. I thought, well, we're okay. Well, so what? You know, 